गुरुर् ब्रह्मा गुरुर् विष्णु गुरुर् देवो महेश्वरा गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्मा तस्मय श्री गुरुवे नमः हाय एवरीवन वेलकम टू मेगा मनी टॉक्स एंड हेयर आई एम अगेन आफ्टर अ लिटिल ब्रेक फ्रॉम रेगुलर सेशंस ऑफ मेगा मनी टॉक्स आई विश टू बिगिन टुडे सेशन विद अ नॉट सो ब्रीफ कॉन्टेक्स्ट सेटिंग ऑल माय लाइफ स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम माय चाइल्डहुड स्कूल टाइम आई हैव बीन प्रिविलेज टू हैव ग्रेट मेंटर्स एंड टीचर्स इन माय लाइफ and i have been very lucky in being showered with love affection and i have got lot of special attention from my teachers and mentors uh, but in today's information overloaded world we re really find mentors who can cut through all the noise and put us on the right path uh, that leads not only to worldly success but also ensures that we stay connected to our roots and fundamentals Last year, when I uh, took a plunge to become a money management coach, I knew what I wanted to do, but I was struggling to find a roadmap to achieve that goal. After three months of soul searching since beginning of 2023, in this phase of looking for some direction guidance, I came across one YouTube ad, wherein the person uh, I will call this person as Person X was promising to provide the guidance that I was looking for. I attended his webinar with a lot of skepticism, but found a lot of sense and conviction in what this person was saying. As usual, I wanted to be doubly sure, so I attended his webinar again and got the same feeling as I had got in the first webinar. And so, by the end of this second webinar, uh, I felt so much resonance with this person next that I decided to join straight to his premium diamond program. at that time i was quite new to this world of funnels digital courses silver gold diamond levels etc but i felt good about enrolling for this program and uh, although it was quite a big dent on my pocket this happened on 31st march 2023 next day on 1st april 2023 there was this online event trainer growth summit hosted online by success gyan and facilitated again by our dear person nex whose diamond program i had enrolled for but so sorry it was this person fa uh, facilitation and also so impressive was blaze singers aura that i i ended up joining blaze singers bst a gold program another big dent in my pocket however i was totally in awe of this person who was able to convince me to make such big expenses on consecutive days and he seemed to be on a trail blazing tra a trend setter in digital coaching world so that marked the beginning of my journey of becoming a money management coach under the guidance of this person ek i set up a uh, foundational system for my coaching and finally uh, i became what i what people now know me as a mega money mentor and today a little over an year later i am feeling overwhelmed with the honor of hosting this super mentor ex no prizes for guessing who this mr ex is it is our one and only sid india's leading digital coach siddharth rajshekhar hi sid welcome to mega money talks thank you it means a lot to me that i am hosting you on my podcast and we are going to have this conversation thank you dinesh great to be here i mean it's been spoke about dents in pockets i've been through that journey too but i just want to say dents in pockets will create peaks in income and that's what we're going to talk about today yeah sure sure yeah yeah like uh, it's an initial dent that we have to take but in the longer run yeah definitely uh, it's going to uh, it results not just in monetary way but in other ways also you have accomplished a lot as a digital coach and uh, that needs no introduction everyone knows about it what i would like to know is what are your eyes set on next you have spoken about nalanda in some of your sessions uh, and that seems a very big vision what at what stage is that vision for now and what are the current challenges you are looking to overcome yeah dinesh good question you know vision has never changed from day one you know just that now nalanda has Uh, been more the emphasis, but even when I started, you know, you know, two thousand eighteen, two thousand nineteen, there's still how we can redefine education was always been the focus. I've always spoken about the different phases of uh, evolution of the industry. Like uh, right now, we're seeing a lot of influencers. The next next phase is influencers are now building their own ecosystem, so they're not depending on the social media platforms. So they want to become they're not just an influencer, but they want to become authority in their space. So now there's a shift happening uh, in the industry from influencer to authority. Authority is somebody who like is not just uh, getting likes and followers they are actually making a difference in other people's lives uh so and then now the 
the third, fourth, and fifth phase, which I'm really excited about, is collaborations. You know, uh, what I'm excited about in the next few months is and years is I want to help more and more people work with each other. And even now, when I'm doing the trainings in my own communities, as much as possible, I'm trying to connect members with each other to create those transformations. And when collaborations happen, there's going to be exponential growth, a lot of cross pollination. When that happens, I'm really excited about the masses, like the, you know, even not a typical person in a typical city who has no clue, no clue about digital coaching, they should be inspired to get their children or get themselves learning from one of these ecosystems. And that leads me to phase number five is uh, the golden age. So my vision has always been golden age. Even when I wrote my gold card in 2018, I said I promote the golden age. At that time, I did not have any clue what this golden age is all about. So I feel the golden age is going to be a, a space or a world in which we are living where we are going to see a culture of learning being uh, predominant everywhere and not just uh, learning from schools and colleges, but learning from mentors or implementers. So uh, I, I will still stick to the same vision, but now this, the vision is getting more concrete. And now we have a, like a, a symbol like Nalanda to say that, yes, Nalanda used to be like this thousands of years ago. And now ILH is doing it. And now we have like thousands of teachers and coaches and who are having their own communities. And each one is independently working with each other. But all of us are, in one sense, the same vision values if they are going through this process of, like you mentioned, uh, under the mentorship of Blair Singer. So, uh, yeah, that's my answer to the question. Nalanda is reborn now. Yeah. So, is Nalanda going to be a specific uh, institution that you are going to create? Are there any timelines that you have thought of that? No, the Nalanda is, uh, the, the avatar of Nalanda right now is what we are doing. So, Internet Lifestyle Hub, I can say it is you know, the Nalanda reborn in one sense because, uh, and we are not like a physical institution with a brick and mortar building where students are coming. You know, that's, that, that was the old Nalanda. The new Nalanda is we have thousands of teachers all the, the the university of the future is all about Zoom rooms like this. You know, people are learning on Zoom and people are in all parts of the world. They're learning from coaches and mentors or implementers. They are not just learning knowledge. They're just they're being part of a community, which Nalanda used to be. Nalanda had 2,000 teachers, 10,000 students. Now in ILH, if you see our top 100 uh, students that I've audited, we have three and a half lakh students. So it's like, it's just, it's a different form. But also offline experiences come into play. Like I, we also do live events in, in our community and stuff like that. So yeah, we are, we are in a new world now. So the, the avatar is different. Yeah. During COVID times, forcibly or whatsoever, like Zoom picked up. And But post-COVID scenario, people want to have offline events, in-person meet each other. Yes. So that is also important mix required because people are craving to be with each other in physical company True. of each other. Absolutely. Okay. And you have plans of bringing that in your mix. So we are already doing it once in six months. We have events uh, for the community yeah. called Freedom yeah. is a Retreat. Yes. And it's two day intensive. So 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. And again, the, the way offline, even now we are doing in our hackathons, we do offline meetups. So I'm actually grouping people in groups of 10, 20 people based on which city they are. And I'm facilitating more uh, offline meetups, small group meetups along. And then when we do our offline event, that's a big one. Like we'll have 700, 800 people in those kind of rooms. So there's, there's nothing that can replace the intimacy and the connection and bonding that can happen in an offline event. And also right. it's not about the event. It's about the way you conduct the event. Yes. You know, it's, uh, it's not so much about knowledge because knowledge is anyway there on YouTube. Knowledge is there even in the online calls that we do. It is a way you uh, you design those experiences where you're facilitating uh, transformations in a room, uh, not based on knowledge, but based on the human to human interactions that happen. You know, putting them into groups, exercises, high fiving, the music, the dance, the food, like this. It's multi sensory if you actually think about an offline. Yeah. Uh, last year I attended MMI uh, first yeah. time in July, and yes. if we see that like in three days, there's not too much of information being given. But the kind of experience, the exercises and uh, that we Absolutely. go through, it feels like as if we are like full of energy and we are recharged yeah. by the end of the three days. We See, are it is not about, it's not about data anymore. Like data is there online, but offline is about uh, internal shift. And internal shift happens only when you are able to design the program in such a way where uh, the participants are doing activities 
and not just listening to somebody speak they are doing activities and and they are experiencing that magic so yeah uh, this is something that you can't do on zoom you have to experience it live cool cool yeah very nice yeah it will be very interesting like i am looking forward to having more of offline uh, interactions happening like uh, that's something i'm really looking forward to yes you had been running a digital agency way back in 2012 and after that you got into all these success gyan programs various programs ttt mts that you have spoken about and at a certain stage you thought of becoming a coach and that's a according to me that's a different mindset from um, myself if i see right from my childhood i like sharing knowledge i wanted to become a teacher but from someone who is an executive and from there becoming a coach wherein education providing or knowledge sharing is something it's a major mindset shift how did that happen to you so if i go back in time the my first job at age 19 was teaching and i did not plan to be a teacher i it just came naturally because i used to teach people music production and how to use uh, you know the digital audio workstations and uh, the, the whole bunch of stuff that i used to do around sound engineering as a topic and i used to be, teach people who are twice my age like i was a 19 year old kid teaching a 40 year old you know but but it was not about age there it was just about the specialization yes. so, so in the beginning it was a little bit awkward i felt a little awkward because in traditional society it's like you have to learn from somebody who's older than you like typically like how schooling system is uh but uh, here it was not uh, it was a different environment even the teacher who was teaching me in my institute he was just 2 years older than me or 3 years older than me or uh, so the connectivity was much different from college typical college so that was my first taste of experience in teaching then it went uh i would say it took the back seat for a while so i got busy in the corporate world as i was doing tones for mobile phones and i built an agency all of that happened and when i was running my agency digital marketing agency the the training thing came back when this company called bharati axa they they wanted to do a training for linkedin for their employees like for a small team of the hr team they wanted to get up to speed on um, uh, on linkedin so i went i put together a plan i remember uh, like i had to do a two day workshop there you know so it was a corporate client some 15000 rupees for two days which is big money you know as a trainer or corporate trainer the back corporate then corporate training was used to happen like that <laughs> yes and i remember this is back in 2012 i guess yeah so and then i remember having a conversation uh, for closing that deal and uh, i had never done any trainings before that so there was this one decision maker there was this hr person and it was me and there was one more person and then we just we told what we can offer and what we are going to do because we were running an agency and this is what we can do and uh, the person who was the decision maker he said uh, oh you have not done any trainings before i says i said no i have not done any trainings before okay and he looks at the other person he says uh, oh so we are going to get trained by so we are going to be the guinea pigs okay he says <laughs> like that okay it really i it, uh, i did not feel good at that point but luckily we they closed the deal Uh, and they gave us a chance and i took it up as a challenge and i remember after i finished the two day workshop that same guy who said oh we are guinea pigs he came and he thanked me and he gave me a, like a really good testimonial so i wanted to prove him wrong okay it's not that i have not taught before or trained before so that really opened up uh, you know i had to go through that pressure to build a two day program but you must have enjoyed yeah. it that's why you thought of continuing it later because absolutely absolutely in fact i did a lot of trainings from 2012 that uh, after that axa bharti axa experience i did around 62 workshops in all uh, top cities like i did wow. in in uh, in bangalore in chennai mumbai uh, hyderabad you must have i caught the bug Dubai. of teaching like like it is a bug like you catch like uh, you feel yeah, like yeah. sharing your knowledge absolutely and i was teaching business owners and there were, i would do small rooms of 5 6 people uh 15 20 people every month and it will be a negative uh, on the balance sheet you know so after paying everything you know when i come back after training i'll feel good but we were not profitable in that and we would get three four clients like that but i never stopped so that's the thing you know when something is not working i just kept doing it and i kept improving it and uh, that is when i got in, in 2016 i attended train the trainer by blessinger yeah when i attended train the trainer by uh, that was 2016 I, i think i had already done around 50 plus workshops but i did not understand uh, 
you know, suggestology. I did not understand facilitation. I did not understand how to sell in the room. At that time, I realized I was, I was leaving so much of money on the table. I, I didn't give any offer. I just finished the training. Anyone would inquire and then we would just get them to be as a client. So, but that was the turning point for me, I guess. It was like uh, when I understood the difference between being a trainer and a leader, uh, that opened up my mind. Because before that, I was just teaching techno tactics. I did not have a purpose or a mission or uh, like a vision to do something. It was just very... It, uh, today, if you see people who are not coming in that school of thought, if you look at any ad on Facebook, if I look at an ad in three seconds, I'll know where they're coming from. You know, I'll know who's their influence, whether it's like, like a get rich quick or you'll, like they say, right, when you just, when you, when you give, when you're able to understand, see a person, you'll know where, who's the parampara, like you know their pedigree, you know where they're coming from or their lineage, if I should say. Yes. yes. Uh, and for some of them, they don't have a lineage. They just, you know, they're seeing somebody else, they're seeing some international uh, marketers and they're just trying to, you know, do the same thing. So for me, the, I guess, the experience of sound engineering days inspired me to train more. But also, I believe that every single human has that innate nature nature within them to share knowledge to others. Uh, the, the teacher is there in all of us. It, we just need to have the right, uh, you know, the spark has to be fanned to make it into a fire. And that's what I wanted to do, you know. So when I started Internal Lifestyle Lab, I was like, in I wrote the book, you know, you can coach. So it is a statement actually, like it doesn't matter what your background is, you can coach. Some people think coaching is only for some people who can speak well or whatever. It's not about that. It's about uh, everybody, every human has that nature to to share knowledge share. with others. And Sharing is our do that and, nature and we have knowledge yeah. within us. So we want to share knowledge also. It's just that we have to find, like someone has to help us find what we want, we can share, where we are our true, best true. at. Yeah. Yes, yes. So that's been my training journey. That's how I started. And uh, today we are, you know, it's such a fulfilling place to be. Yeah. Yeah. Probably that set the foundation when you did it in 2012 for Bharti Exa. And after that, you kept on doing and that probably like uh, we see your journey starting like most of us know, like uh, starting 2018 or 19 or during COVID times when it really picked up. But probably the foundation of the coaching was being set in those times when you were doing those uh, negative balance sheet coachings. Basically. Yes, yes. Correct. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, in between, you spoke about like uh, when you see someone's ad, you are able to make out the lineage. And I was seeing your podcast interview with Blair, wherein he spoke about like in today's world, uh, actually marketers like are able to project themselves as great trainers. Mm. He, he spoke yeah. about that. And that's true because like uh, when someone uh, like me or someone other person sees an ad uh, telling that like he is a coach and he can change our lives in certain ways it's easy to fall for that. So what's your message around that? Like, I would like you to say something about it. Like how to distinguish. It's good. See, it's very oh. good. It's easy to craft messages or marketing messages. Um, but the true experience and, and you need all these kind of people. Like my message around it is that you need to have all kinds of flavors in the online space. You need to have all kinds of flavors because the market is also maturing right now. Maybe five years ago or say four years ago like it's very believable somebody would do that but now i think the market is much is smart mm -hmm. enough to understand uh who's actually creating value and and the way that they are presenting and it's uh, the way that they are showing up so the first message is we need to have all kinds of people and because everybody's vibe attracts their own tribe it's as simple as that people who want uh you know who want the solution in a particular way they'll get it they'll get what they want uh, but another thing of what I've observed is that once a person experiences uh, like what we do in the lineage of say Blair Singer and Blair, if you look at his methodology, it's uh, he says that training is not a performance. Okay, everybody, they want to do the showmanship and performance. It's a conversation. And once you are able to cut through all of that, that BS and just be real, it does not matter. You don't have to try to prove yourself to be some something great. Like today in ILH, people are, who are launching, they're launching at rocket speed is because I'm always telling them, don't need to hype yourself up to get sales. Just be real and, and share your true intentions and be authentic, you know. And uh, people will connect you for with you for who you are and they will buy, not, not based on 
okay, which car you drive or, you know, all that flashy stuff. They, they're connecting with you because they know that you can solve their problem and you have, you're communicating that in a, in a nice, in a way which is, uh, which appeals, which not only appeals to their logic, but also appeals to their heart. Okay. So my message is uh, around this concept is that uh, the market needs to taste everything and they will come to a, they will gravitate towards the area where the authenticity is is the highest. It's like um, one night stands versus committing <laughs> to a marriage, right? People go through all these one night stands, and then they realize finally, that those, those, those relationships are sore. And then when they commit themselves to a marriage, when they find a true mentor who they want to be with, they'll be with them for life. Like they'll do anything. Those are the kind of mentors I want to create. But in today's world, like after all that people have gone through, somewhere people lose touch with authenticity. And even in your community, like uh, ILH, uh, when people are coming, becoming authentic at times becomes very difficult for people, isn't it? So how, uh, people have- The authenticity is something, it's like this, you either are or you're not. It's just, yeah. you can't, it's not like, okay, I have, I'm gonna become authentic from today. It's not like that. Okay, so so you have to, it, that's usually a journey, you know, because when people come in, say I look at uh, ILH also like a hospital, okay, uh, when people come in, uh, they don't realize what kind of uh, stuff that's there, but when people walk into hospital, you can't judge them for who they are, you can't judge them for, because they, they would have, you don't know what their background is, but all you can do is provide a beautiful space and just keep giving them the right medicines, and in this case, my medicine is a uh, code of honor, you know, uh, just reinforcing value systems uh, and uh, and just showing them what's the way to do it. Okay, you, like, and showing them what's the way not to do it also. Okay, and, and giving them both the perspectives so that they can choose. And as they go through it, uh, and as they keep attending the calls, slowly but steadily, they, they, begin to, they begin to realize that. And that's why attending an event like, say, Train the Trainer or MMI, uh, it really opens up the heart, you know? Yes. It, yeah. I, it also opens up those layers, like all, see, I'll tell you, think, Everybody is doing things with the right intention. Okay, if you actually think about it, there's nobody bad as such. No, no. It's just that their life situation or their their past experiences, they put these different uh, layers over them to protect themselves. And once they realize that you don't, they don't need those layers to to survive and to protect themselves to survive or thrive in this world, and uh, and that they can do much better by removing those layers. Uh, it's such a liberating feeling when people go through that experience. And I went through the experience myself. Like if you look at my old videos, you know, it was more hypey and stuff like that. And then over the years after being in close association with uh, Blair and uh, and many other trainers and all the success Gyan trainers, like we all work with each other. It's, uh, we don't need to do that. We actually like, we love to unsell. Say, don't buy my product if you're not serious. If you're committing to the journey, then only then we would like to serve you. And because of that, it helps in every way. Like we have a low, lowest uh, refund rate in the industry. Nobody wants a refund and they feel their value in it. We have a very high success rate because we are not just trying to pitch something just for the sake of it. Uh, we still follow a sales process, but then we like to unsell before we sell. And we, want, we don't sell the commodity, knowledge as a commodity. We want to sell the journey that it requires commitment. It's going to take you two, three years to actually grow some, build something uh, substantial. So all of these factors, uh, it all adds up. And those who actually go impulsively buy and you know with these hypey ads, they will experience buyer's remorse. And then when they come into these rooms, then they will realize, okay, it requires effort. So yeah, that's yeah, it's always been there in history. You know, it's just that uh, you know now it's happening in the coaching industry as well. And um, for being authentic, like uh, being in a right environment and this kind of community where everyone is striving to be authentic, it helps. Because in outside world, if we go back again, the pressure comes on putting on those layers. That's so, true, right? Yeah. Because even in the corporate world, somebody is, uh, you know, they, they want to project their image in a particular way so that they can outsmart their competitor or whoever is in the workspace. So the environment is not conducive. But when you, you know, create an environment that is conducive, they change. Because my mentor Blair, he says that you can't change people. You can't change people. But when you change the environment, they environment. change. Just like a, a group of smokers. If you're always smoking, if you're a smoker and if you want to quit, but but your friends are not uh, quitting, then you can't quit. It's like that. Yes. So you have to put yourself in the association of the right people. Yeah.
Yeah, uh, yesterday in a inner circle call, you were sharing that you have gone through that phase and finally you were able to quit that. So you have gone through that yes. journey yourself. Yeah, yeah, yes. Cool, cool. Like it's going nice. So, Sid, uh, uh, like uh, in this uh, whole education business, we talk about lifelong learning. So, uh, being an educator, uh, being a lifelong learner is also Im important. So, what is your current approach to learning? Do you ever feel saturated, fatigued, or overwhelmed with so much learning continuously happening? Uh, or do you enjoy it? Like, and uh, how do people should take it? Like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I would like your message on that. It's a beautiful question, and I'll give you a very di a different uh, perspective. See, as humans, uh, we are, uh, you know, we are transmitters and receivers of information. Okay, like the mind. If you look look at a radio frequency, a radio can uh, can transmit. It transmits the audio, but it also receives data from other places. So, uh, by nature, our human uh, mechanism is built to to continuously receive information and transmit information in which way and we transmit information and we share knowledge in our own family friends circles that so that keeps happening now the question is when does saturation kick in so it's like if you just keep eating 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 food uh, but you're not digesting it and and you're not uh, you know uh, there's but no output know. for the food yeah it is just getting it's just bloating in your brains that's when you feel like oh man there's so much this overwhelm that kicks in so when you are able to approach it in a way where you learn, do and teach simultaneously, that means you learn something. So today now if you are learning something from this particular interview, any one idea you pick and then you go and apply that idea. Okay? Just put it into action and as you are applying that idea, you will have your own unique uh, insights that you will gain from that learning. Like for example, I learned from Blair, I learned from many other men mentors and all the programs and then I take that knowledge. And I apply that knowledge. And then when I'm applying it in my own way, I gain my own insights. So it's not like, even though I'm, I'm applying the common knowledge, but the way that I would process that will be different. Yes. Like every human body, when we eat, the way that each one of us digest the food is different because our yes. body type is also different. Same yes. with knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, here, the in this case, the output is the way you present the knowledge. So there, there could be some people who read a lot of books, but who are not having the ability to share that in a in a crystalline way. There are some people who don't read so much, but they can just take learnings from anywhere, but they're able to present it in a, in a different way. So I yes. guess the skill for this age, if you ask me, is to learn how to learn. Starts there. Okay. Then learn how to teach. So it is not about what you teach, it's the way you teach it. Yes. How you can simplify it. And Blair also, he says, no, you don't have to blind people with your brilliance. Nobody cares about your brilliance. How can you simplify the knowledge for them? So the way you teach matters. And the, the most important thing is like who you are as a person. Like what are your values? What do you stand for? Why do you even want to learn this? So saturation also happens when you are learning something that you don't like or you're teaching something that you'll get bored of. But when you really love, like for me, digital coaching or the topic of whatever I'm you know, teaching here to redefine education because I'm a product of a broken education system myself. I don't have a degree, all of that. Like this topic, I can go on and on about learning. And of course, marketing. I love marketing. I love studying uh, ads and you know different kinds of uh, things. And it's ever evolving. So the beautiful thing is when you learn, do and teach, and then as you're implementing, you'll gain so many new insights and uh, you'll start to innovate. And for me, the, my biggest learning I get from our own community, I don't go and look outside what other people are doing. Okay? Because there are many people who have different things. I guess ILH has innovated over the last five plus years because we have learned so much uh, with the brilliance that is there within the tribe. Like I just do polls, feedback, you know, somebody gives an idea, okay, then I'll take that idea, implement that idea. I did not go do a course on this. I mean, the ideas are being generated within this community, which itself is like a melting pot of uh, you know, innovation that's happening. So that's why I'm, uh, so to answer your question, the sooner you can build a community and the sooner you have this exchange in, uh, of transmitting and receiving information, that's going to put you on a, on a speed learning track, which uh, you'll be always on the cutting edge because whatever you will share will be very, uh, 
very real, what people really want, what they really face, not what's in your head, but what's what the market needs. And of course, you're going to process it in your own way and digest it and, and bring it out in your own way. So that's how I look at learning. So my routine is I'm very free flowing, like whatever is I want to learn from anywhere, I just pick it up. I do audio books. I listen to when I do more one to ones with my students, with my quantum members, I'm able to learn a lot from them. Uh, like once they give me their problem statements, then I go back thinking about how can I solve that in a simpler way. So, uh, I mean, that's the best form of learning. It's again, hedge to hedge, human to human connects. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Um, but since obvious, of course, your community is at altogether different level, like for people like me who are like at the initial stage, like uh, we don't get that kind of interactions. And But yeah, even to start with, like having those small interactions is good enough. And yeah. if we start enjoying it, learning itself becomes fun. Great. Absolutely. Even I started with those those initial bit of 20, 30 customers and then slowly grew it you know, over a span of six years. Um, and I, I I remember the hundreds, I did some 500 one to ones in the first 18 months. You know, my my son used to come and ask me, Dad, you're selling freedom as this model, but you don't have any freedom. <laughs> OK, so I should tell him, Rishab, just wait. But the thing is, uh, those conversations, even if you have a small community, the more conversations you have, it'll start to compound over time. And the insights that you'll gain from the one-to-one -one conversations are much better than chat GPT and everything else. Chat GPT can help to process that. But uh, yeah, so learn from yeah. everywhere. That's my answer, yeah. Yeah, chat GPT is a very nice assistant, but we have to be master of it. That's the thing. So what is real freedom? Are you curious to know how SIDS answered this question? Hey, I hope you have been finding my conversation with SIDS enriching as well as enjoyable. Sorry for interrupting your great experience. This video is just part one of the conversation that I had with SIDS. You will find the answer to the question, what is real freedom, in the second part of this video, along with a lot more fun as well as value. If you liked the conversation till now, then trust me, it is going to get even better from here onwards. My humble request to you will be to like this video and subscribe to my channel. You will find the video containing the second and concluding part of this conversation with Sids on my channel, Dinesh Mega Money. I'll be posting the second part video on 19th May, 2024 at 11.30 AM. So don't miss out and watch the second part too. I appreciate your valuable time and invite you to share your feedback in the comments below this video. Let's keep this conversation going. So see you in the second part of the video.